In this video, we're going to learn about populations. We're going to learn about the differences between populations and communities and how populations interact with one another to form a community. We'll also take a look at limits that can be on populations and finally take a look at factors that Im impact populations. A population is a group of members of the same species that live together in the same geographic area at the same time. So in this example, we have a population of hippopotamuses. A community, on the other hand, is a collection of populations interacting together in the same region at the same time. So in this case, we have a population of hippopotami interacting with a population of birds. So that makes a community. Population size is impacted by four factors. One of them is births, so how many births are in the area. That's also known as natality. Also, the number of deaths or the mortality. The immigration, so the, or the organisms moving into an area. And then finally, emigration, the organisms moving out of an area. If you know those four values, you can determine whether a population is growing or not. So growth is equal to the sum of the births plus the immigrations, subtracting the sum of the deaths in the emigration. If that value is positive, then the population is growing by that number. If it's a negative number, it is shrinking by that number. And then it, if the value is zero, then there is neither any growth or loss. So now we're going to work through an example. In this example, we have a population of bunny rabbits that was monitored over one year. So 10 bunnies were born. So that's our first piece of information. Four bunnies died is our next piece of information. Six moved in. And nine moved out to the neighboring forest. So now we need to figure out whether or not the population is growing. So now we'll solve the problem. So remember growth is equal to the births plus the immigration minus the deaths plus the emigration. So remember we had 10 born and six moved in. And we're gonna subtract the four that died and the nine that moved away. So if we solve that, we have 16 added to the population minus 13 that was taken away from the population through deaths and emigration. So we have an answer of three. So our population did grow because we have a positive number and the population grew by three. And that's how we figure out whether a population is growing or shrinking. Carrying capacity is the maximum population that a particular habitat can support and sustain over a long period of time. So you will notice if we look at a population growth curve, there will be a point where the population tends to stay steady and that would be your carrying capacity. If that value got higher than, than um, that you would end up with you know some decline so it would bring you back down to that carrying capacity. If there were no limits in a population it would continue to grow exponentially and it would take a shape like this so it continued to climb and climb and climb and then it would never taper off. In reality populations do have limits because populations are interacting with other members within the population and then other factors. So habitat, water, food, etc. So if a population established itself in an area, it would take an S-shaped curve like the one you see here. And there's actually some different phases in this population growth. So if a population established, there would be a leg phase because they are becoming adjusted to the environment that they have just settled in and then over time they would start to grow and they would start to grow exponentially so there's an exponential phase 
eventually, when they're starting to get closer to the carrying capacity, there'll be a transitional phase. So the, the population is growing, but barely. And then finally, the plateau phase is when it tapers off. And that's when the population has reached its carrying capacity. There are two different types of factors that affect population. The first one is density dependent factors, and they affect populations because the population has reached its carrying capacity. So it's become too big. So competition, disease and predation are all examples of density dependent factors. If you have too many of a population, they're gonna compete for the resources. Disease would be more easily spread because they're closer, more closely packed together. And then predation will be higher because there's more of them to be eaten. Density independent factors, on the other hand, affect populations regardless of their size. And natural disasters are perfect examples of these. So a forest fire would be a density independent factor. It doesn't matter how big you are in population size, a forest fire is going to impa impact the population. And a flood or a hurricane would also be problematic to a population, but it's not caused by the size of the population. Now, scientists are interested in estimating the size of populations, and that's done through a variety of different methods depending on the type of population you're trying to estimate. So because organisms are in the wild, it's hard to, or nigh impossible, to gather them all and count them. So scientists will collect a random sample and will estimate from that sample how big the population potentially could be. So you have to assume in these calculations that mortality, natality, immigration, and emigration are zero. And the two different methods we're going to take a look at are the mark recapture method and quadrat sampling. There are other methods like transex sampling that can be used as well. So the mark recapture method is ideal for organisms that move around a lot. So you can't just harness them all in. Um, you need to use this method. So the first thing that you would do is you would capture and mark a random sample and mark them in a way that's not going to make them stand out to predators or be unable to find a mate. It would be hopefully a discrete marking. It could be a radio collar or a tag on a leg of a bird. You would then release the, that captured population back to the wild and you would wait a while. You would then recapture another random sample and you would count the organisms in that sample, but you would count the number that are marked and also the number that are unmarked in that sample size. So you would then use the following formula to calculate. So population size would be equal to the total number in the first capture multiplied by the total number in the second capture divided by the number in the second capture that were marked initially. So we'll work through a population example. So 28 deer were captured and marked and released. Later, 31 deer are captured, of which 18 are marked. Find the population size. So our N1 is 28, our N2 is 31, that's our second sample, and the number that were marked in that second sample is N3, and that was 18. So our population size is equal to N1 times N2 divided by N3, or 28 times 31 divided by 18, which equals 48 deer. Our second method of population estimation would be quadrat sampling. And this sampling works well for plants and animals that don't move around. So we can use this method. So here you would, use a square wire of set size and you would drop it or throw it or place it down in different areas and you would only count the organisms within the quadrat and then the population size would be estimated from this for the total area of the space. 